Hi, and welcome to the Boys Cooking Show. I'm your host today, Joey Quibodo, with Cash Saver and Piggly Wiggly here in Opelousas. And I'm Chef Jason Ugay from Steamboat Warehouse in Washington, Louisiana. And we have a very special guest today. We have our own Jason. He'll be cooking up two nice, really nice dishes for us today. So he'll get started in just a couple of minutes. So join us back for more What's Cooking. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Again, we have Jason's going to be fixing us two wonderful dishes. Uh, Jason, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so Joey, the first dish I want to show y'all is a pork dish. Um, it's one that we do here at the Steamboat quite often, and there's a reason why I'm going to show you this. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second. First, I'm going to show you that we're using a pork ribeye. Basically, um, this is a full pork tenderloin, but this is the side, the end cut that's further to the end that has more of the little spinalis piece. Okay. So hence the term, you know, pork ribeye. Um, the other end would have more of the eye. So I'm gonna take some of our season here that we make at the steamboat. Now Jason, for, as far as for like cuts, you said one toward the end and toward the middle. In your opinion, which one's better? I, well, it's a matter of opinion, but I prefer this piece. It has the little, um, to me it's just a little more tender. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to baste this real quick, put this on my little cast iron skillet. Now this little piece of meat does not have to be cooked well done. Um, believe it or not. Believe it or not, you know, and I know there's still some of the old school people that would say, oh no, no, they'll cook it to death because they were taught in the past mm -hmm. that, you know, trichinosis, uh, pork needs to be cooked well done. And I know people will do that, but I actually eat mine about medium. Right. So. I mean, we got so many different things now with the FDA going and inspect everything. All the chances what they had years ago are gone. Right, They're, they have uh, stricter regulations on what they can uh, feed the hogs that they're um, raising, farm raising. Um, you know, stricter, um, like- Preparation policies. Like the, 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 where they keep them, like how high the ground have to be, cement and all that stuff, it's, mm -hmm. it's cleaner. It's uh, more sanitary, I guess. Um, so- and that's what we need these days. Right. So <clears throat> the reason why I wanted to show this dish is something we do with the steamboat quite often as a special. Um, and it's a really big seller and we have always had very good reception to it from the customers. Um, <clears throat> so in the past, on this show, we have made uh, a raspberry glaze, mm -hmm. which is very simple and we made it from scratch. Uh, blackberry glaze we made from scratch um, on the show um, where we take fresh berries, mm -hmm and sugar, and just cook them down, strain all the pulp out of it, and we make a, basically just a simple syrup, is what it is. And if you would just add gelatin to that, then you would have a jelly, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, so there are times when I have made fresh muscadine glaze from scratch, but certain and time of year- After making the wine? After making the wine okay. and drink the wine. <laughs> but you, um, so we, you know, we made it before, but the challenge is to actually, you know, it's only a certain time of year, it's a very short mm -hmm. period of time, and it's to actually get your hands on some. So That's when true. I don't, when I don't have that, I use a local product. I always shop local. This is a local product. It's basically muscadine syrup. The only difference between this and the muscadine jelly is mm -hmm. it's no gelatin added. So what I do is take that and just put it in a pan and reduce it a little bit because you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. So basically in this pan is what we have. We reduce it just a little bit. Okay. And you don't want to reduce it too much. You don't want it too thick, but you want it thick enough to whenever you coat your pork, because I, I coat it when it's finished. Right. And you know, when you have a plate with different sides, a veg and a starch, you don't want it to run off into, you know, if you have a smothered potato, you don't want to eat muscadine smothered potatoes. So you want to watch your thickness on it. And at this point, since it's it's really, it's not hot, you can basically, it, it won't come off man. <laughs> so when we're about to finish it, we're going to heat it up just enough to get it to where it's, you know, the consistency we want. <clears throat> now. The reason I said all that is because if you go to the store, you can take any kind of jelly you want, 
-hmm. that you find at Cash Saver or Piggly Wiggly North Store. Mm -hmm. Put it in a pan, and once you heat it lightly, don't turn on high, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but if you heat it up really lightly and kind of warm it and everything, you will actually, it will thin enough to where you can coat any piece of meat you want. Soften it up real good, yeah. Right, so this, this pork dish, I've tried, I can't tell you how many different types of um, sauces I've glazed this pork dish with. Mm -hmm. um, I've done French 10 ounce pork chops, I've done you know, pork cutlets, um, all kind of types of pork. And I've used blackberry glaze, figs, yes, fig preserves. Yes, yes. I've glazed it with some figs. That's probably my favorite. Um, I don't know why, just figs. Certain time of year, I get friends who give me some figs and I make my own from scratch mm -hmm. deal. Um, so, you know. Yeah, figs are almost the same thing like muscadines. Like muscadines, be surprised. They just got that one small window right. of picking time, and that's it. Yeah. It's gone. It's not like blackberries or right. something like that. You just you got to get to them on time, and or you'll miss them. Right, and you better be on your toes and make sure you get there before someone else gets them. That's especially the birds. <laughs> right, the birds so, like uh, that. So, okay, we're gonna take a short break, and uh, Jason's gonna come back, and uh, we'll finish one dish, and we'll start the second one. So come back for more. What's cooking? <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. Again, Jason is fixing us two really nice dishes today. Our first one we have started with the uh, pork, pork. You call it medallion or a, a filet? I call this a pork ribeye, or you could. Okay. If if I wouldn't be specific, I would just call it a pork loin chop. That's what I would call it. So I like your, your, your phrase better. Well, pork loin. Yeah. Mm. So it means all the same. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So we have some asparagus that we have blanched, right? And so. We're gonna go ahead and put these just so we have some kind of little accompaniment to our um, our pork. Gonna get a little color on it. We're gonna throw a little bit of steamboat seasoning on those. You know, Jason, I hate to say it. Some people just look at asparagus and go like, oh yeah. Mm, but I if they would have them grilled like that, I love them. They would love them. I've had people come over here before, and I'd see them in public, and they would say, um, "Man, I don't really eat asparagus, but I love your asparagus." Mm -hmm. Like. I guess because it's, people don't really eat this way at home. Right. Most people are used to the canned asparagus, you know. It's the way you do things around here. I know it's just everybody, the carrots out of this world. Right, and I don't people even like carrots. Them. Like, I don't like cooked carrots at all, but mm -hmm. I love those cooked carrots. Definitely. I had a buddy ask me last night, man, can you give me a recipe for those steam syrup carrots of yours? I'm like, steam I give, syrup <laughs> carrots? Really? I can give you a recipe, but it ain't got no steams in it. <laughs> All right, so we're just trying to basically get a little color on there, and we want to kind of, you know, make sure they're warm. You don't want to get them too, too, you cook them too long, yeah, you get too dark, and you know, right, they may yeah. burn. So our pork is done. <laughs> so we go ahead and take our asparagus, see how quickly those are done. Because they're already pre-cooked. When you, when you blanch them like that, they're cooked. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get a little color and season them up and stuff like that. So, so the way you blanch yours, Jason, is you just drop them in some hot water for a few minutes and then take them out. Depending on the thickness, on the size, sometimes you get the little pencil asparagus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. you get some real big ones. Uh, it depends on the size of them. But see here, you just want to coat it just enough. Yeah. No, oh, that looks great. Because it, it doesn't take much. This stuff is really sweet. You don't want it to, to run too much. Oh, I almost put the wrong stuff on there. And all it takes is a little bit of green. Except and that's dish number one. And now, the I'm reason hungry. why the reason why I wanted to show you all this today is to show you how simple at home you can do something so simple like this. Um, you can find, I'm not sure you'll find the muscadine, but you can find any other type of um, you know, preserves jelly, or jelly yeah. or something like that. I mean, it all depends you, if you want to make your own or... Right. If you want to skip a step, you know, because some of these things you find in store are just as good as you would make. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer to do it from scratch if possible, but if you can't find the berries and you in a pinch and you want to... There's some right. jellies, yeah, that you can be found right. in the store. Speaking about the stores, uh, all the nice ingredients that Jason's using here today can be found at your local Piggly Wiggly stores or Cash Saver. Two here in Opelousas. 8410 Highway 182 North. And Southside? That, uh, uh, 
Oh, uh, don't tell me you forgot. Wait, don't say it. I, I just been <laughs> saying this all morning long. Uh, 1305 Heather. That's Tide. right. Now you got it. So if we have other pig weekly stores around. We got Scott Rain. Um, you know, you can go by there. They have all the nice ingredients too. So either your local piggly weekly stores go down home, down the street. Yep, right. right there. There you go. You get all your fresh ingredients. Okay, Jason, where are we starting next? <clears throat> okay. So this is a dish that I like to do um, on occasion because there are people who love pasta dishes but they don't like the red sauce. They don't want the heavy cream. It's really heavy. Not everybody can tolerate the heavy cream. That's correct, yeah. So here's an alternative you can use at home. Um, every now and then I'll have a, a customer say, man, I, I really want that pasta dish but I don't want that heavy cream. Now, nine times out of ten I'll have some fresh rosemary and thyme or something like that. Um, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't always have to have fresh herbs. You can take parsley. Uh, if you have something lying around, oregano, anything like that. Um, today, we're going to use parsley, some rosemary, and some fresh thyme. And all I did was de-stem and kind of rough chop it. Rough chop it. Very simple. But you can smell mm. all the different oh, herbs yeah. in there. Yeah. And the flat leaf Italian parsley, this is the one to go to if you want flavor. Um, in the stores, you can buy both. There's a curly mm -hmm. leaf. That's more for presentation, if you ask me. And I would use that one more to chop for garnishing. Um, but it doesn't have as much flavor in it. Right, so. exactly, yeah. OK, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little olive oil. You want to be careful just how much you put, because you don't want you don't want too much olive oil to pasta ratio. So we're gonna turn. Let's see, find this burner. Turn this pot on low. This fire. You don't want this getting too hot. Now our shrimp is gonna take the longest. So let's go ahead and put some shrimp down on the, the little grill we have here. Some nice 21, 25 count. I took. The peeling, I peeled them and took the, uh, the stems off of them also. It's definitely white shrimp. Yeah. I think you use brown. I, to me, brown shrimp is just not as good as the white. No. And I think everyone thinks feels the same way. Yeah. Let's put this over here, Joe. Okay. Oh, my. <clears throat> so what takes the longest is really the shrimp. Uh, now, this part right here, you really don't want to get it really, really hot. You just kind of want to, we're going to let We'll put the herbs in here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to put them on a really high flame and you know, it's going to mess the whole thing up. So you want to kind of warm it, kind of okay. just let it simmer in the um, olive oil. It's extra virgin olive oil. So <clears throat> Now, we've talked about olive oils before, and you always use extra virgin. Yeah. Um, extra virgin is the first pressing of the olives, so it actually has more of the flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, the second pressing of the olives is actually the, what's called pomace oil, which you would normally use since it doesn't have as much olive oil flavor or olive flavor. You use that for like cooking, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, this one, since it's something you're really going to be eating a lot of, I'm going to use the olive oil. I'm, I'm looking for a lot of flavor. Um, you know, maybe, you know, we actually need it to cook something, saute something, mm -hmm. where you're not really going to be consuming all of it, just you flavoring the item, you would use pomace oil. Yeah, it's cheaper. Okay. <clears throat> I got you. So this this is basically very similar to like what you would call a pesto, mm -hmm. like an alternative. Instead of using pesto to toss pasta with, this is a very simplified, it's not basil, it's not a basil pesto. It's not considered pesto because it doesn't have cheese in it, mm -hmm. and it does also doesn't have any kind of nuts, pine nuts, or anything like that. But it would be very similar dish to if you did take pesto and just toss your pasta right. with it. And you, you're bringing up a good uh, point there, because people, not too many people know that they got nuts in pesto. Yeah, there's especially if you got a, a I've seen it with, allergy to them. Right, I've seen it with pine nuts. I've seen it with pecans. I've seen it with pistachios. I've actually seen it done with just a parsley pesto, like mm -hmm. no basil. Um, I've seen a, a, a ton of different variations, you know, like pesto is not just basil pesto or pine nuts, you know, it's, it's a few different variations to right, it. Right, exactly, yeah. So um, we're gonna, let me go ahead and finish my shrimp. Okay. And then 
We'll take a break while I do that, and okay. then we'll come up and finish our dish when we get back. Okay, so join us back for more What's Cooking. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Okay, Jason's working on our second dish, and we're having a bit of fun off camera. Yeah, <laughs> always. Gotta have some fun. All somewhere. right, so we're gonna put our, uh, our herbs in, and you can already smell. Mm. Oh yeah. Very aromatic. So this is what I wanna do. Take our pasta, and I'll we'll put in a little bit of boiling water, so that way we can reheat our pasta. Mm -hmm. And we want to drain it. Really, really good. We don't want any excess water in here. We want olive oil. Now let's see. Put our pasta in there. Oh yeah, that's a big difference from the heavy cream and the red sauce, like mm -hmm. you were saying. Yeah. And I like to toss it. And if you feel the need, put some more. Very nice. pretty dish. Now, how I'm gonna season it is just a little bit of, this is equal parts salt and black pepper. Now, here's the trick. Cause you wanna make sure you have enough seasoning, but you really don't wanna over season this. Just wanna make sure you have enough. I like a lot of stuff. You know I like it hot. I know. <laughs> okay, where's my fire? Mm. I wanna turn this one off. All right. Now, Pecorino Romano. I'm a cheese lover. I love cheese. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite cheeses. It's one of the three hard cheeses, like Parmesan is a hard cheese. Romano is a hard cheese. Asiago is a hard cheese. Right, yeah. And we're going to toss this a little bit. Put this into our pan. See, it's lightly, lightly coated. Can you smell that now? Oh, yeah. Mmm, it smells so good. Okay, rosemary's coming good. So what I'm gonna do next, let's see, we're gonna put our sh shrimps. Our shrimps, my shrimps. <laughs> Some shrimps on top. And you can put on top of here whatever you want. You want grilled chicken, you can do that. Um, so this is how I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna shave some fresh Asiago cheese on here. Just to finish it off, Joey. Beautiful, smelling so good. Ooh, and I love, I love cheese, so this is probably more cheese than you would want at home, mm -hmm. but I love it. <clears throat> you can't have too much cheese for me. And so we're gonna put some parsley, just to kind of put on our shrimp. Why not finish it with parsley? We got parsley in the dish. And I got some garlic toast that I did this morning. There's your finished dish. Very simple and healthy, other than the carbs. Mm -hmm. It's a very healthy dish. Very easy to make, too. Right, and low fat as far as the uh, cream. Uh, you don't have the acidity of a tomato sauce. People get heartburn. I know right. people will just stay as far away as they can right. from the tomato sauces. So, alternative. Very simple. You yeah. saw how fast we did those that. Those people that are lactose uh, intolerant. Yeah. Great dish for them. But actually, both of them are really good. They look both really good. You could have both of them at the same time. Right, and they're very, two very quick meals. This is something that's Lent mm -hmm. at the moment. You can have that on Friday nights. You can make that for the family. You yeah, know, it would be a good idea, Jason. We talked about earlier about the asparagus and the carrots. You put like two asparagus and some carrots all in the same plate? You could. Actually, the carrots would do really good with um, the pork that we do with the fig glaze. Mm. The carrots go really well because it's almost like a candied yam flavor with the, you know, this to me, it just goes together. Yeah, definitely. And again, if you want all the ingredients that Jason's used here today, you can come by the Pico Wiggly or Cash Saver store here in Appaloosa. Well, 1305 Heather Drive. Okay. Call that number, it's 948 8199. That's correct, got it. And if you want to call the North Store at 8410 Highway 182 North. You're going to be my can, wife over there. Yes, and Ms. B. And Ms. B, that's right. And you can call them at 948 9427. But you thought I forgot that one too. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder, you know, sometimes you get on the age thing, like you're on up. Oh, all timers? Yeah, but you don't change. You just look the same. Ten years ago, we were seeing something. You don't change. <laughs> I mean, look at these pictures. I mean, just, guess when you might have changed? 
But look at that one over there. My hair color changed. That's about it. Well, you can't tell you have a hat. <laughs> you always wear a hat. I know. You never tell. That's just my thing. Jason, let's talk about possibly people that want to come on the show and, and do some cooking for us. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to be a guest on the show, you can call me here at 337-826-7227 or email me at chefhugay at yahoo.com. Speaking of guests, uh, we, I will be doing a show next week um, promoting the gumbo cook, oh, I'm sorry, etouffee cook off. Crawfish etouffee cook off. If I'm not right. mistaken, it's the 33rd annual. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that right. And um, it's coming up March 25th. It's a Sunday. It's a great event. I go every year. I'm about to skip this year because I got Bon Jovi tickets before this came up. Oh, Bon Jovi. <laughs> and you go to Bon Jovi. Yes. So I blame you. in New Orleans. My favorite place on earth. So mm -hmm. um, I ain't gonna be able to make it this year, but um, it's always a great, great day. It's fun. They got law arts and crafts. They got bands. I think they got uh, Wayne Toops there. Mm -hmm. um, is he playing a band, Catabla or something like that? And he plays in some kind of trio. And um, they're gonna be there. I have all the information. Um, we're gonna go over all that next week. And the following week, we have the mayor of Eunice coming on to cook something. I don't know what it's going to be just yet. The mayor of Eunice. Right. And um, nice. I'm not sure just what it's going to be making. Probably etouffee. Now, next week what you're going to be cooking is it the crawfish meat stew? Crawfish <laughs> meat ball stew? <laughs> no. Nothing like that? <laughs> inside joke for y'all for for on that's an inside joke. Let's get this joke. with Dylan. I mean, you got to do the crawfish <clears throat> meat ball meat stew. I think I'm going to make something. Um, I've made etouffee on this show at mm -hmm. least twice. In the, in the last 12, 11, 12 years, I don't know how long it's been. So I'm not gonna make etouffee and bore y'all with the same thing, especially if the mayor's gonna be making it the next week. But I think I'm going to take some etouffee and make some items with it, like some things and kind of show y'all what we can do with Great. that. Great, so. fantastic, I'm looking forward to it. I love crawfish. And thank y'all again for watching The Voice Cooking Show again. Join us back next week when our Jason's gonna be doing some fabulous cooking for us again. So come back and join us next week.